Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I am Usman Javed and this is the Determinate Structure Analysis class. In this video we will discuss about the internal loadings at a specific points, shear and moment functions. There are, there are three types of basically internal forces present in uh, structural members uh, which are beam, um, beam frame and truss elements. So, what are these type of internal loadings? These are these may, might be uh, shear forces. These might be a uh, normal forces or axial forces or moment. Uh, likewise, uh, when you draw the section over uh, in any member, you will have uh, all these forces in a frame element. Uh, if we discuss about the bar element or a uh, if we discuss the bar element or uh, trusses, it, uh, we only have a uh, normal forces which would be resisted. In case of a beam, we will have a uh, moment and shear. Um, yeah, uh, and in case of a frame, we have all these three forces. This is specifically for the bar elements, uh, which is normal forces or axial force in the element which may tend to um, elongate or compress the uh, structure, um, structural element. This is basically the shear which acts, um, acts, acts across the cross section to change the shape, which tends to change the shape of um, cross section um, of an element. This is a moment which tends to bend the element. For example, uh, um, here is an example which shows or determine the internal shear and moment acting on the cantilever beam shown in the figure. So um, these are the external forces and we have to determine the internal um, moment and shear at point C and D. Uh, you must keep in mind that we, we would draw the section at point C and D and find out the shear and moment so uh, first we uh, will consider the po at point c so we'll draw the section at point c um, there might be a two choices you can take the um, section from the left side from point a to c or uh, second choice might be from b to c in this case we have considered it from b to c in b to c um, element we have a three external forces acting upon this beam this cantilever beam uh, with a distance uh, across the uh, one meter and also there is a 20 kilometer of uh, moment acting at the free end of this beam so we'll find the moment at point C so virtually uh, we would have three different uh, forces or internal um, internal forces acting upon this point which is um, shear moment and axial force so in in order to have this element this uh, cantilever beam in an equilibrium we must have this forces these forces which would be transferred to the other section of a uh, remaining other remaining section of a beam so we will uh, find out all this uh, force in three forces so first uh, there is no uh, normal force or axial force acting upon it so normal force would be equals to zero um, then we will um, take the sigma f of y equals zero taking the upward uh, forces equals uh, upward forces as a positive and downward as a negative so uh, we have this shear this is a virtually shear that acts upon this cross section we have drawn at point c vc is going upward so it would be positive and remaining these uh, three uh, five kilonewton forces of three at this span would be taken as negative so now uh, shear is positive and negative five negative five negative five equals zero so vc vc at this point shear at this point would be equals to 15 kilonewton uh, then we take the moment at point this C equals zero. Then we will accumulate the all the moment acting due to all these uh, forces and this external forces 
at point C uh, while keeping the convention as a con- counter clockwise moment as a positive so MC uh, is a clockwise so it would be taken as a negative so uh, moment due to these forces would be clockwise so it would also be taken as negative and this is basically forming an equation of minus mc minus 5 min- because it's a um, clockwise moment it would take as taken as negative and force moment due to these forces would also makes uh, makes basically clockwise clockwise uh, moment that's why it has taken as negative and lastly we have a 20 kN moment called clockwise um, after summation we would come up with the mc which is moment at point c so uh, so on the other so on the other section we have uh, we have a vc and mc uh, in this section uh, and uh, these forces internal forces vc and mc um, applied on uh, rest of the section of a beam this is a vd at point d now we have taken the section at point d so um, after uh, at the d we have a, a force of a 5 kN acting upon just at point d so by considering this we will um, find out the moment and shear at point this the the moment would be the same because there is no moment arm uh, because of um, this force acting so it also only contribute in the shear vc so if we consider the f sigma f of y equals 0 then um, the shear would be contributed 5 kN so um, uh, shear uh, in this in this equation in, in in the case of a section C we have a 15 kN and in VD we have a 20 kN because of this force in case of moment the moment would be the same secondly de- um, second example is basically determine the internal shear and moment acting on the section passing through the point C so we will have to determine the moment and shear at point C so first uh, it's a hinge support and it's a roller support it supports the two reaction and it's uh, support only one vertical reaction in this case uh, the there is uvl uniformly varying load uh, with a maximum value of 20 kN per meter um, so the resultant of this uvl would be at the 2.3 of um, uh, 2.3 of a span from a support A or 1 by 3 of a span from support B so the resultant of UVL is 90 kN which comes out as half of intensity into a span so uh, we will apply the sigma moment at uh, this section equals 0 uh, then we will have the reactions coming out uh, there are two, two unknowns which is sigma which is a y and b y and you have a two equilibrium equations which is sigma f of y equals zero and sigma moment equals zero so it is easy to calculate this uh, uh, external forces that is b y and a y so uh, a y in b y is uh, came out as 60 and 30 um, since we have no horizontal forces acting upon it so the horizontal component would be t- taken as zero uh, by taking section at point c uh, we will apply the section over uh, this point and uh, by by calculating uh, the intensity based on the similar triangle rules uh, you will uh, you will have a 3 by 9 times 20 kilonewton meter of uh, intensity at this point c with a distance of 3 meter um, basically it's very simple to calculate uh, for, from a similar triangle rule like we have uh, this intensity equals x then we will take the this intensity uh, by the similar triangle we will make the equation like 20 divided by x and 9 divided by 3 uh, you will come up with the variable x x would be equals to 3 by 9 to 20 so here is an intensity 
and this is an external forces external reaction that is ay uh, at that support so uh, at point c we have uh, as it's a beam we have a uh, three um, forces which is moment and shear and axial force there as since there is no axial uh, lateral forces acting upon the beam so the normal would be zero the resultant the resultant force acting upon this variable uh, this beam on this variable loading would be act upon 1 by 3 of uh, this length of uh, from um, point c so 10 kN acts upon it so we can easily calculate the shear and moment by uh, taking the sigma f of y equals 0 and sigma moment at 0 um, at point c so sigma f of y equals 0 taking upward, um, upward forces as a positive so we will uh, get the pc as we have only one variable and all the other things are constants um, vc is negative because it's going downward uh, negative 10 were negative 10 and 30 which is upward which is positive we see would come up as 20 kN uh, sigma moment at point C would be uh, taken as 0 so we have a solution of a moment at point C uh, the summation of a moment at point C as a 0 so the moment form would be like 10 cross uh, 1 by 3 and 30 cross 3 so mc plus 10 cross 1 by 3 of 3 which is 1 minus 30 of 30 multiplied by 3 so the mc would be as 20 uh, 80 kilonewton meter so likewise in this uh, example we have to calculate the uh, internal shear and moment acting upon point C. I am leaving this example for you uh, to solve it by yourself and determine the internal forces and shear at point C by transferring the applied loading up to the points. So uh, in case of a uh, different type of loading upon the beam uh, what would be the internal forces uh, and um, uh, what the what would be the procedure to find out the internal force at different points so, so first the basic rule would be the you will have to take the uh, sections at every change point first I have to define the change point change point is basically the point at which the loading or uh, cross section is changing so loading type in this case we have a rectangular cross section going uh, uh, going full length of a beam so only the loading is a uh, loading type is varying so the we have a w intensity udl and the point load of p at point x uh, which acts upon point c this distance x1 and this is x3 and uh, x2 and this is x3 so we have to take the section and the udl before the point load and after the point load so the the procedure of taking the section would be like you have to have a section at a change point and change point is defined as the change of loading or a section in the case in this case we only have a change of loading loading type so we will take the section when the loading changes in this case we have a udl we will take the section within the udl after the udl before the point load and after the point load so by taking these uh, these three sections we would have to uh, come up with the whole solution for this beam for calculating the internal forces changing upon this beam or secondly you can also take the um, section um, this is basically an absolute method of taking the section and this is a relative one when you have a, when you have a loading type changing uh, you can take the section of, uh, on a relative basis by 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 splitting your beam or a member into uh, into different uh, sections you will have to take the section when the 
uh, behavior of the beam is changing determine this uh, shear and moment in the beam shown in the figure by taking the section method uh, at point x x is basically an unknown variable uh, lastly we have uh, taken a internal forces at um, at some known distance which is which was 3 meter i suppose so in this case uh, axis variable you will form the uh, equation for this uh, this section at a varying length x of a beam and take the values of a shear and develop the equation for shear and moment so you have a 10 kN intensity UVL acting upon it which is uniformly varying throughout uh, you will what you will do is um, make the resultant of uh, 10 kN which is 45 how we can take the resultant which is half of length into in intensity which comes out at as 45 kN and it's, it acts upon 2 by 3 of uh, this length or 1 by 3 from this end uh, from right end or 2 by 3 of left end so you will um, determine the external forces first we, you have a vertical force moment and horizontal force will be zero vertical force uh, taking for the vertical force you have to take the sigma f of y equals zero so sigma f of y 45 and this uh, vert vertical external reaction would be equate as 45 and moment would be as 45 multiplied by 6 which comes out as um, 240 so you have external forces now you have to calculate internal forces which is shear and moment at the section at some orbital point uh, x uh, x length so x is unknown you will uh, solve you will uh, basically x is unknown you will take the intensity in terms of x because x is unknown so by the similar rule uh, triangle similar triangle rule uh, you will develop an equation um, using similar triangle rule you will develop an equation which is which might be as uh, base over base in ten, uh, perpendicular or perpendicular you will come up with our intensity value so how can we determine uh, um, the intensity of this beam yeah, intensity of this load at uh, point x so what we'll do is uh, 9 divided by x and 10 divided by x is this length 9 is this length multiply by 10 divided by unknown so uh, you have a variable of uh, uh, unknown intensity which is which would you would take as take it as y so y, y would be equals um, x over 9 into 10 this come up uh, from the similar triangle rule so uh, here we have a two uh, unknown internal forces which is moment and shear you will take the sigma f of y equals 0 sigma f of y equals 0 so shear is acting downward and you have a 45 kN um, acting upward uh, so v equals so v would be equal as uh, 45 minus this much of uh, UVL loading so um, the resultant of this UVL loading would be half of base into height so you have no normal acting upon it so um, this is basically the resultant of a UVL acting at 0.1 x by 3 and this is the reaction external reaction so we'll, you will calculate the V by summating the sigma f of y equals 0 so v is going downward it took it it would taken as negative and this would also taken as negative which is the component of a uvl acting upon the two third or one third of a, this beam so uh, it is taken as a positive so we have a negative shear negative component of uvl and positive uh, support reaction equate equated to zero so you can calculate the v in terms of x so you have this equation you just have to compute the value of x and come up with the value of v you, if you increase the you can see that if you increase the value of x your shear will be reduced 
and if you reduce the value of x you will your share will be increased so in this case you will um, calculate uh, moment likewise by taking moment at point this equal 0 or x equal 0 by taking counterclockwise moment as a positive you also take the clockwise moment as a positive but make sure that you have to make the your convention constant towards your work so that it would not stimulate or changes your results so uh, you will take the component of a uh, uvl a component of a uvl multiply by this horizontal um, distance perpendicular distance we will take the counterclockwise moment it would be positive uh, um, this moment will also taken as a positive and this would be negative the reaction would be like negative m negative f x square over 9 into x by 3 and positive 45 or vice versa um, uh, make sure that you also have a uh, fixed end moment at two, uh, at this support to 70 you must have to add this uh, up so the moment come up as uh, this uh, this force uh, this equation you just have to compute the value of x you will have a moment in this case the uh, as it's a fixed support you have a moment and shear value maximum at the support and at the free end you will have a minimum value of moment and shear so likewise you you can solve this example as well uh, by your own so i am I'm leaving it up to you so this was the end of uh, this lecture of internal forces uh, in a beam element uh, you can calculate the internal forces which are shear and moment and what are the external forces which are support reactions um, so here here comes the end of this lecture in which we have discussed the uh, internal forces within the beam elements you can ask the question uh, in the comment section or you can contact me on email thank you so much for watching